He gives a clear indication on this black suitcase. The case is put back on the carousel and kept under surveillance. Whoever picks it up will then be stopped and searched to see if Badge is right. A passenger collects the suspect bag and then attempts to pass through the controls. But Customs Officer Phil is waiting for her. Hello there. Hi. Where are you just arrived from? I'm telling you. You telling by yourself? Yeah. Could you come to a bench for us, please? It's good to come up to this one here for us. Thanks very much. You have a passport, please. Now, quick look. Right, are these all your bags here? Did you pack them all yourself? Yes. And do you know what's inside all of them? No, I've got them close. Just close? Have you, been, have you been forced or threatened to bring anything into the UK? And do you understand the controlled drugs, firearms, they're illegal to bring into the UK? Let's have a quick look. You got the keys? Please. Phil checks to see which is the suspect case and then asks the nervous passenger to open it. OK, I'm just going to put this one for extra machine as well, OK? Phil can't see anything yet, but an X-ray shows what looks like organic material in the wall of the case. So that's probably what we're looking for. I'll do it. I'll quickly go and do this. Quickly go and spike it, just make sure. Phil finds a white powder, which he tests yeah. to see if it is cocaine. Let me just see. The speed of the reaction indicates the quality of the drugs. <laughs> it's actually not reacting. Uh, it's gone, it's gone now. Look. It's That'll obviously, sort of. uh, it's obviously not very good quality. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were hoping for, but a bit, uh, a bit quicker and a bit more. The purity is low, but Badger's legendary nose for cocaine has sniffed out another smuggler. OK. OK, the time is 07.32, and I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved in the importation of controlled drug. You don't have to say anything. It may harm your defence. Do not mention when questioned something which later on in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. The woman's face says it all. Bootleggers use ferries to bring in large quantities of tobacco, and officers are cracking down on so-called backy buses. Amongst all the innocent travellers, a passenger's offered a free trip away by bootleggers, as long as they agree to carry back the guideline allowance of tobacco, which the organisers then collect and sell on the black market. And did either of you purchase or obtain anything while you were away? I just got 100 to these. 100? Yeah. 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 And, what and I got you? some tobacco. Yeah. How much have you got? Um, 20. 20 watts. 20 packs to 10. Right, OK. Can I ask you just to pop to the end? Yeah. That officer just to have a quick look at your bag. This passenger has 10 kilos of tobacco worth nearly £2,000. Now it's up to the officers to find out if it's for her own use. If not, it will be seized. In Bristol, dozens of flights a day arrive from outside the EU. Officers target these flights to make sure no one brings in more than their allowance of 200 cigarettes to sell on the UK's black market. Usually bags are x-rayed to catch the bootleggers in the act, but today a passenger hurrying through the customs channel alerts Jane, who pulls him in for a chat in the search bay. Have you got any cigarettes? No. None at all? No? Can you just get that one up on the bench and I'll just have a quick look in it, please? Well, I won't walk away yeah, now. Just take it. You have got yes, cigarettes. Yes. What? Can you just get that up there? The initial lie didn't work, and it's closely followed by another. It's only that one I've got. Right, OK. But Jane's having none of it. Can you get the other case just up on that bench and open it up for me? Both bags are full of Turkish cigarettes, and the passenger is full of lies. Have you got any in your hand luggage? Yeah, yeah. 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 all right. Take care of it. Yeah. Well, you are, yeah. We're not under arrest, so... No. No. What? Can walk well, we'll do you some paperwork. You are obviously over the allowance, so I they are, are going to be obviously seen. it's not against the law to do it. Well, what I'm going to do is do you some paperwork. The goods will be seized and destroyed, and if he's had goods seized before, he may face a fine or a prison sentence. 
In Portsmouth, Nikki's now questioning the ferry passenger carrying 10 kilos of tobacco to work out if she may be carrying it for someone else. How many times have you been on previously? Um, I was here last month. Last month? Uh, no, sorry, September. OK. The second. Right. And how many times have you travelled on the Bilbao this year? Uh, about three. About three times? Yeah. OK. Have you been stopped by customs before? No. No. A few simple checks tells Nikki that this passenger is also telling lies. She <laughs> normally brings in three kilos and a full quantity of cigarettes as well. And I've done that, but that was back then. Right. Just see if she's been jogged before. That's so as well. She's a well-stopped customer. <laughs> Lying to a customs officer isn't a good idea, especially if you want to keep your tobacco. But Nikki suspects she's carrying it as part of an organised backy bus. Some of these are for you, some of your family? Yeah. OK. And how much money have they given you towards their contribution towards the goods? They, they haven't really given me anything because I'll give them gifts, you know, Christmas. Right, OK, so you don't expect to get receive any payment of any no. sort for these goods? No. How much should they cost you? Um, £340. £340 for all of it? Yeah, yeah. Right, OK. okay. It turns out the woman's travelling on a coach known to customs as one of their regular backy buses. The passenger is offered an interview, but she decides to give up. Yeah. OK, you're not under arrest. I'll leave the stuff. Have you got the passport? Because there's other yeah. people waiting to go home, you know what I mean? OK, so you don't want... Do you want me to detain the goods or do you just want to abandon them? Just abandon them. Just, just abandon them. Passport, yeah. OK, so you don't want to stay for interview and you do not want me to detain your goods? I need to get home. My father needs me and there's people waiting on the coach. OK, so you just want to leave your goods and walk away? Yeah, yeah. OK. Knowing that organisers of backy buses tell their carriers to abandon their goods in case they give too much away in interview convinces Nikki she's done the right thing, but the woman insists she's done nothing wrong. It's over. We're not doing no drugs or nothing. You know what I mean? You should be looking after worse crim. You know, I'm not a criminal, but you should be looking more to criminals, shouldn't they? Thank There's you. There's your passports back. She has been stopped by customs before, even though she claims that she hasn't. Um, I was not happy in my own mind to let her proceed with the goods unless I knew they were for her own personal use. And on this occasion, I don't believe they were. Back in Bristol, Jane's waiting for the results of background checks on the man caught with 11,000 Turkish cigarettes. Have you ever been stopped by customs before? Never? No, I've never been stopped. So if I check the records now... I'm yeah. not... no. The checks reveal this to be yet another lie. Just a record to see if he's um, had anything seized from him before or if she's had anything seized from him before. I don't think he has, but he's been stopped before and he's been issued with a notice one. He said to me initially, I said, have you got cigarettes? He went, no. I said, well, I'm going to look in your bags. And he said, oh, they're full. Oh, right. And he said that he knows. OK. So I'll just uh, get rid of him, I think. The man has been stopped before, but it's his first seizure, so escapes a fine. Although he's lost the cigarettes, which will be added to the billions taken off the black market by customs each year. You can tell that this was for resale because of all the different brands. Different brands, brands yeah. yeah. And there was no luggage. No. Yeah. And they were both trying to race through without getting eye contact with anyone. And that was why I went after him, because I think he was trying to get out quite quickly. Meanwhile, the woman in Gatwick South Terminal won't be leaving just yet. Might just leave that there. You just come round here. You can take a seat on the far side, please. OK, do you understand why you've been arrested? No. OK, we found what we believe to be a controlled drug in your bag. She's okay, keeping she quiet. Okay. Not surprising, as there's around a kilo of pure cocaine in her suitcase. She's all the way around the bag. You can feel it as well, how thick it is. Good job. Mm. The woman's taken to the custody cells for questioning. If found guilty, she could be facing a long prison sentence. <laughs> the drugs worth nearly £50,000 have been taken off the streets and it's all thanks to Badger. There's always that time between the indication when they actually find it. Sometimes it can be up to sort of quarter of an hour before they actually give you the thumbs up there's something there. That's a bit of a worrying time. But um, with that indication, 
more or less knew that it was something there straight away. Still to come, some odd behaviour arouses suspicion in Gatwick. OK, has anybody asked you to bring anything back for them? Not this time. <laughs> not this time? Nah, not this time. <laughs> he turned round to them and said, oh, right, well, OK, the game's up, there's six tonnes on board. The UK's airports are where customs make most Class A seizures. Today in Gatwick, officers are waiting for targets suspected of bringing in cocaine from Trinidad. The two women could be the first cocaine job ever for new officer Mark. Nervous because the rest of the team are all going, this is it, this is a job. And they've, they've definitely got it, so I'm nervous. <laughs> really trying not to be. Two drug couriers carrying three kilos of cocaine were found on this flight yesterday. These two women were meant to be on that flight, and their highly excitable behaviour is raising suspicions further. Thank you. Okay, has anybody asked you to bring anything back for them? Not this time. <laughs> not this time? No, not this time. We were too naughty to do it this time. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, is it back to work then on Monday? No, children, we're housewives. Yeah, a lot of them. Um... Asked why to cooking and cleaning. Obviously, just flying out somewhere very nice and. Yeah. Uh, Jeez, that was horrible. So, oh, was it? Yeah, it was they're so rough horrible. and rude. And then dogs are treated like rats. And we could be kidnapped. Strangled. We had to be escorted everywhere we went. Right. Went in. Went in. Okay. <laughs> um, so, could, this is going to sound a silly question, but so obviously the tickets for getting out there and staying out there could be quite expensive. How did you how did you pay for your tickets? Somebody packed by the system. All oh, right, that was that was nice of them. Who who was that then? Was that? Oh no. That, 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 that was nice of them. <laughs> why, why, why did he do that? It's got quite a lot of money to be honest with you. Their behaviour and their story convince Mark that he's about to get his first cocaine seizure, but the first swab shows no trace. Completely clear. Chris joins Mark to dig a little deeper. Hello. Hello. Oh. oh, really? Right, now, do you need a hand? Yeah, would you like to stick my one? Actually, if you'd, uh, you've just taken the words out of my mouth. Or do you want me to uh, or if you want to this pop this you. through, oh, just... Yeah, well, it was just... Oh, yes. Oh, how exciting. Not as exciting as it sounds. I'd like an X-ray while I'm here. Uh, yeah, well, we, we could actually arrange that, if you wish. Have we'll, uh, but not, not just oh, yet. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that... We'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge in with Okay, that looks about done. Okay, I'll take, I'll take okay, this one away. It, it, yeah, don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll get that sorted. Can I come with you? That is obviously... There's, uh, there's something not quite right there. Yeah. The, the, the fact is it's not opening and closing oh, properly, which anyway. to me is uh, yeah. a bit, a bit oh, suspicious. It feels a little bit heavy at the bottom here. I just have a quick look. Where are you taking it, Michael? I'm sure he'll be as gentle as he can. The bags are clean, but with so much to gain from smuggling, sometimes couriers carry drugs inside their bodies. We'll go for a strip search, pretty well, obviously, rather than... What I'm about to do, I'm going to go and speak to a colleague, um, because I'm going to ask for to, to somebody to do a, a search of person. Search of person? Yeah, bec yeah because... Of, I, well, that's not something that we can... know. It would just be a visual... Yeah, it would be a Why visual inspection. Well, because of... Where you've come from? Oh, no, well, well, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on just a second. Hang, sorry, hang on just a second. Where you've come from? Uh, you, you've both said to me, obviously, uh, your housewives, you, you don't have the money. Obviously, you said Uncle well, Tony's pay for it. Yeah. No, no, that's absolutely fine. But obviously, we come across people that don't have money that other people pay to go out and bring drugs in. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's something that we need to check. Yeah. They're not happy, but a body search will find the truth. The so quicker I go, the quicker it gets done. All right. Officers aboard the cutters protect our coastline against drug smugglers, who are a constant but invisible threat. These high-powered ships operate in all weathers, but in September 2000, a storm off the coast of Cornwall drove them back into Falmouth in search of shelter. Always on the lookout for suspicious activity, they noticed another vessel taking refuge from the heavy seas. The vessel, rather than coming into Falmouth, it turned and went to the other side of Carrick Roads, which is into a small harbour, which is actually St Moors. 
The officers thought it was a local, but then watched as it tied up in a dangerous position. As the tide started to go out, they realized that this mooring was actually on a mud bank or a sand bank, and the yacht was actually settling and starting to tip. Always ready to respond to a fellow sailor in need, the cutter decided to help. So they launched their onboard uh, rigid inflatable, their rib, motored across into St. Moore's Harbor, went to the vessel and challenged it. The officers had come to help, but the man on board was a smuggler who made a startling confession. And as they stepped aboard, uh, he turned around to them and said, oh, right, well, OK, the game's up. There's six tons on board. The officers' act of charity had paid dividends. They were completely flabbergasted. The first reaction was, well, what do we do now? And then somebody managed to sort of, well, I better get a notebook out and make a note of this, because effectively I've got a confession already before we go to court, at which point they arrested him. The skipper was a man called He led them into a cabin to see the drugs for themselves. There were bales of cannabis uh, literally in every available space within the vessel. They also found evidence he wasn't working alone. But two passports were actually found on the vessel. So they decided that the best thing to do was to remove him from the vessel. Three of the cutter crew stayed on board the catch and wait and see if the crew came back in the morning. Moore's accomplices did return right into the trap. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. Two men jumped into the cockpit of the yacht and basically the cutter crew arrested them there and then. The men joined their skipper at the police station where his unusually frank confessions continued. And he was presented to the custody sergeant. He was then asked, what's your occupation? To which he replied, I'm a drug smuggler. This time, however, he'd failed. On the day of the trial, all three pleaded guilty to their part in the crime. Mr. was subsequently sentenced to 10 years imprisonment, Mr. to four years imprisonment, and Mr. to five years imprisonment. Three more criminals were behind bars, thanks to the keen eyes of the officers and a stroke of luck. The street value at that time was estimated to be in the region of 14 and a half million pounds. At the end of the day, the vessel being forced into Falmouth was really the only reason that we were able to intercept this load. Without that, it's very unlikely anybody would have known that this consignment of drugs was on its way. Back in Gatwick's North Terminal, Mark is still hoping to find his first drug smuggler. His two female suspects are about to be searched. So far, they've cooperated, but the daughter is getting angry. The, the search, the search, um, yeah, um, yeah, obviously I can... We're going to have a search. As soon as we've had that shirt search, I think we should be able to leave. We've got children to get back to. You're delaying us for no reason. Once you've searched well, us, you know we have nothing on us, so why are we still holding your custody? Their story suggests they're carrying drugs, and Mark waits expectantly outside for the results. Bend over slightly. No, slightly. That's right, and, and part the cheeks of your bottom. The strip search finds nothing, but Mark refuses to give up just yet. A pair of shoes from the lady that we've just searched. Um, I'm going to swap them with our tool that checks for drugs, as it can be an indication that they've swallowed drugs. So I shall do that get a result. A small indication. The indication means Mark wants to do a body scan. 0.5, something to think about. With these indications, keen to go for a, an x ray, which the mum has, has already sort of informally said she's happy to do. What about the daughter in terms of x ray? Do you think she'll be happy to she's do that? She's not happy to be here at the moment. If you don't think they're going to stay, you're going to have to look at arresting them. Worried about the daughter's reaction to the x ray, they decide to arrest them. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved with the importation of a controlled drug. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Oh, 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 let's go first, then. Let's get moving. Well, we... The daughter agrees to be x-rayed first. In just a few seconds, Mark will know if they've swallowed packages of cocaine. Yeah, it's 
Nothing for Rush. Against the odds, both scans are clear. And Mark admits that this won't be his first Class A drug bust. 758, you're unarrested. Thank you very much. Mark and the ladies part as friends. <laughs> and you're glad we weren't smugglers, aren't you? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Why no? Because I haven't had my first. Catch the day. Exactly. Well, I haven't had. Well, I'm still fairly new at this, and I haven't had my first successful job yet. Not that I'm wishing you particularly were a drug smuggler, but you know. But, um, and we do understand drugs is very bad in England, and we would not contribute to bringing in drugs because my husband died of a heroin overdose, my brother died of a heroin overdose, so I do understand drugs do not need to be in this country. I've got four children yeah, who I don't want on <laughs> drugs, you know what I mean? So I'm anti-drugs, so no, and got I understand now. why you have to do this, you know what I mean? And all, for, all good on them, all good on them, yeah. <laughs>